Hi, this video is all about the evidence we get for plate tectonic theory from the magnetism that's preserved in rocks. Now we're very lucky as geologists because we can get a record frozen into particular types of rock of the Earth's magnetic field as it existed um, at points in the past and at different places around the Earth's surface. It gives us a tremendous record uh, for the location at which rocks form. Now there are several aspects to this paleomagnetic evidence which allow us to make reconstructions of how continents in the past came together, as in this case, this is a, if you like a modern map of Pangaea, and then how they split up so that we get the uh, pattern of oceans and continents that we're familiar with today on any world map. Now there are several pieces of evidence. The first of these we find uh, as stripes of different polarity in the oceanic crust. As lavas that erupted at divergent plate margins cool below the Curie temperature, the magnetism that exists at that time is frozen into the rock. And it will stay preserved in that rock unless the rock is heated ab above its Curie temperature. So we get a record of, the first of all, the polarity of the Earth's magnetic field. We can see from this small section of oceanic crust just to the south west of Iceland, we see a pattern. And crucially, we see a symmetry in the pattern of rocks, or the, sorry, the polarity of the rocks that have been erupted. It was the key piece of evidence to show that seafloor spreading was the key to plate tectonic theory. But it's not the only piece of evidence that paleomagnetism will give us. If we look at this diagram, we can see that the Earth's magnetic field is organised a bit like a bar magnet. Now we know the Earth can't be a bar magnet. It's too hot and we don't have the right internal structure. But the fact we have a similar field gives us another piece of crucial information. If you look carefully, at uh, the angle between the magnetic field and the Earth's surface, you'll see it changes with latitude. At the poles, the field is at 90 degrees to the surface. At the equator, it's parallel to the surface. This inclination of the field is preserved in the rocks as well as polarity. What that means, of course, is that we can then, if we can measure that inclination, we can work out the latitude at which that rock must have formed. And clearly, if we find rocks that indicate a different latitude from where we actually find them today, that rock must have moved. If we find a pattern of that movement, say in Britain, of progressive northward movement over time, we have some good evidence for plate tectonic theory. It's not quite a proportional relationship. There is a little bit of maths to actually work it out. But we do see that distinctive pattern of changing inclination with latitude. This gives us indications of changing latitudes. We can work out, for example, Britain, 500 million years ago, was 30 degrees, 40 degrees, maybe south of the equator. 
and over geological time it's moved to its present location between 50 and 60 degrees north of the equator. If we look at this on different continents, we get, we can look at patterns then comparing those two continents with each other. Do we see a similar pattern over time? Or do they diverge or converge to show us the relative position of those continents? It's what we call a apparent polar wandering curve. There is a limitation to this. We can only get a measure of paleo latitude. Longitude, or how far east or west a continent is, is simply just not recorded in the rock record. It has no geological impact. Which does mean we can't reconstruct the absolute position of continents. We can work out their latitude and we can work out their relative. Uh, position, but we don't know exactly on, where on the Earth's surface they would have been. We do have to make an assumption as well that the poles don't significantly shift in position. We do know they move, but it seems to be that the movement is sort of centred around the geographic pole. If we look at the possibilities of this, we can see and reconstruct changing positions over time. You'll see the British Isles highlighted in red. So 550 million years ago, the magnetism and other evidence as well indicates that England, Wales and the southern part of Ireland was on a completely different continent from Scotland and the northern part of Ireland. As time progresses, the position of the continents change. By the early Ordovician, we're still separated by an ocean called Iapetus. But those latitudes are going to start converging. You can see there are destructive plate margins either outside of Iapetus. So by the early Silurian, Iapetus is closing. The British Isles are closer to fusing together. You can see the southern part of Britain here, 30 degrees south of the equator. By the Devonian, these continents have come together. The oceans disappeared. In Britain, we have an orogeny called the Caledonian orogeny. And we see now rocks that would be formed in Scotland and in England and Wales would now have a similar latitude. Three hundred million years ago, in the late Carboniferous, we join with the rest of the continents as this supercontinent Pangaea. Magnetic inclinations at this time tell us Britain was around the equator. Britain's northward drift continued though, by the Triassic, we're now getting on for 30 degrees north, in very much in desert latitudes. As the Jurassic begins, slightly less than 200 million years ago, Pangaea is starting to fragment. We're starting to recognise now the emergence of continents that are more familiar to us. Britain by this stage is in Mediterranean type latitudes, maybe 40 degrees north. By the end of the Cretaceous, Britain is now about 50 degrees north. Our northward movement stops at this point, or slows down significantly, as the early Atlantic Ocean starts to uh, open up. You can see the South Atlantic has separated Africa and South America. The North Atlantic is, is starting to uh, move North America away from Europe. So, to conclude, paleomagnetism can give us some very good quantified 
data that allows us to reconstruct some of the movement of continents in the past. We can, of course, try and support this with the other bits of geological evidence that we see in another video in this series. But I think it's really quite convincing. We may be able to explain changes in the environment and things like that, but when that's combined with the paleomagnetic evidence, it gives us very strong uh, ability to reconstruct these past movements. Anyway, don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you there.